Today in this 2016 Ford Explorer, we're going to be test fitting the 23x60 Strongberg Carlson cargo carrier, part number CC-100. This cargo carrier has a carrying capacity of 500 pounds, has a mesh floor here which makes it easy to clean. All around the border of the cargo carrier we have these tie down points for your ratchet straps or your bungee cords. And at the front here we have points where you can actually mount a tail light if you wanted to or if you were going to be blocking off your license plate, there's a spot here to reattach it at the, at the actual cargo carrier itself. So next I'm going to go ahead and give you some measurements. The first being how much distance is added to the vehicle once the cargo carrier is actually installed. So to this edge here, that's about 26 and a half inches. For our ground clearance, it's going to be about 10 and a half inches. And for our closest point to that edge here, it's about three and a quarter inches. Now this does have dual exhaust, meaning one on either side. It's pretty close to our cargo carrier. It's about seven and a half inches, so just keep that in mind with any heat sensitive material. You may want to keep it more towards the center. Now with nothing in it, we have complete access to the rear hatch of our vehicle with no problems. However, since we usually load things on cargo carriers, I'm going to go ahead and give you a breakover point measurement, which is the point where your hatch would come into contact with any gear. That's going to be about 20 and a quarter inches. So just keep that in mind when you load up your gear, that if you want access to your hatch, you're going to have to keep it under that. This does not come with a hitch pin and clip, although you can find one on eTrailer.com. Today we use part number PC3. So there you have it for the Stromberg Carlson cargo carrier, part number CC-100, on our 2016 Ford Explorer. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps, which we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Finally, we have the full speed bumps, where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway.